Thank you for joining us on Sunday Interview. My name is Gravazio Zulu. Now, even though Zambia did not qualify to the World Cup, they were represented by one man in the name of Jani Shikazwe. Jani is regarded by many Zambians as arguably Africa's best referee and was chosen to officiate at the world's biggest stage in football, the World Cup. He is on Sunday Interview today to speak about his experiences at the Russia 2018 World Cup. Jani? Hi. Welcome to the interview. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Nice to have you back. Great, thanks. Now, people know you on the pitch as, as, as Janice Kazwe, mainly on the football pitch. They don't really um, know you very well. I want you to explain yourself. Who is Jani? Well, uh, Janice Kazwe is a superman, as you can, you can see, and um, uh, born in 1979 in Kawe. Uh, that was in May uh, on the 26th. And... Uh, I'm the only son of the late uh, W.C. Skazwe. I had six sisters, uh, five sisters. Now we are, uh, I've got four. The firstborn also left us. So I'm, I'm the pillar of the family as the only uh, son of uh, the late Mr. Skazwe. And um, educated, of course, in Kabwe until I completed all my, my studies. Now a teacher by profession, uh, married uh, with uh, three children two boys and uh, one girl. Where did you go to school? Uh, I was at Angelina uh, Temple Primary School. By then it was, uh, we had boys and girls. This time around when you go there, it, uh, there are only girls. You know, things are, have changed. Then I went to, to uh, St. Paul's uh, Secondary School. That's where I did my, my secondary uh, education. Then I went to uh, Kruma uh, University. I did my teaching profession and uh, I'm now a teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, now, tell us about your, your, your teaching career. Uh, when did you start? And what, what was your main focus as a teacher? Well, um, I started uh, way back in, in uh, 2005. That was uh, the official uh, appointment you know, by the government. So I started teaching at uh, uh, Paramedis uh, uh, Secondary School. Uh, that's where I, I started like, gaining <laughs> experience in, 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 in teaching. Uh, I was transferred again into another school where I also tried to, to get some experience and, uh, and, and stuff. But again, I was uh, really enjoying uh, being with uh, children uh, because even at church, you know, I'm a Sunday school teacher. I like, uh, you know, playing with the children, you know. So teaching is, uh, is part of me as well, sure. What is your interest, the subject of interest? Uh, uh, Mathematics and physical education, yes. Strange no. combination. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of people, they, they talk about it and they say it's quite a strange uh, combination altogether. But again, when you look at uh, mathematics, if I went, uh, look at uh, my, my history, you know, I remember when I was at primary school, I, was, I used to help my sister who was like in grade 7 to do mathematics. So with the interest of mathematics started uh, way back in primary school. So I remember the time even I, I, the time I went to secondary school, I continued with the, the uh, studying mathematics, you know. Though I, I think I was a little bit scared of like going to do uh, ADMA, you know. But I was advised by uh, the teacher who was teaching us uh, mathematics to say, hey, why can't you take ADMA? But I was a little bit <laughs> scared about it and stuff, but I didn't go for it. Mm -hmm. Continued uh, with mathematics. Well, uh, after I, I completed my, my grade 12, I said, ah, I think I can go with uh, this subject because I, I just love it. I just love uh, mathematics. But again, when you look at uh, the, the physical part of it, uh, way back in, uh, uh, from primary school, secondary school, I used to be in sports, mm -hmm. you know, especially playing football. Yeah, so I just continued uh, uh, in, in those lines. Did you play football at any, at any, at any point? In, in uh, serious football, uh, professional football? No, or any I, club? Um, the time I completed uh, my grade 12, I really started uh, playing uh, serious football with uh, Tazara Express. But again, uh, my dad had to like sit me down and say, hey, you have to, 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 to have a trade. You have to go to college and do to, to, uh, some studies. So when you look onto football as well as uh, uh, studying, you cannot... <laughs> have a, a good uh, a direction. So he said, no, first go to school, do some studies, then you can do other things and stuff. And uh, 
I remember he's the, even the one who encouraged me to say, hey, if you really wanted to do something in football, uh, you can do uh, refereeing, you know. Mm -hmm. With refereeing, you can do other things, you know. Other people are accountants, whereas they are referees, if you are so much interested in uh, uh, soccer. Football. Do, do you regret yeah. then that you didn't really take up football as a, as a serious, uh, as, as your career, as your number one career? Well, uh, I wouldn't say uh, I, I do regret, you know. Nobody knows the future. God knows our destiny. So I may think as an individual to say, well, I can go for football. But God said, no, 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 this is not your direction. Your direction decide. So I had to follow God's will, you know. He said, you are a referee. You are not going to be a player. A player. So do do you think if you had continued and seriously focused yourself on, on playing football, you would have probably attained the heights of, uh, of Kalusha? Of course. Charles Mson? Of you, course. You think you could have done that? Of course. You were a great player then? I would have done team? that. It was even this time, okay, I do play Madala's football, you know. I think people can even see to say, well, I think there was some skill somewhere here. I remember we had uh, a tournament here in Lusaka uh, where we had the supporters uh, tournament. The, the you know, Zanako supporters, you know, power supporters, uh, Kana supporters. But as referees, we had a team, football team. Mm -hmm. And we had to take part in that competition right here in Lusaka. And I remember very well, I was the top scholar. And I got a prize for that. <laughs> People were so surprised to say, hey, how can you allow a referee to become a top, <laughs> a top scorer, scorer in that competition? <laughs> so I feel to say, well, I would have reached that, that, uh, that uh, uh, target. It was in life, I feel to say, when I focus on something, I focus on something and I work towards that thing, definitely I'm going to achieve. Now, tell us more about your interest. I, I know... Your father could have guided you a bit. Um, when did the interest start? The you, wanted to, you abandoned playing and, and now you're going to, to become a referee? Uh, the interest started uh, the, 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 the time people started talking about me. You know, quite all right, I qualified. That was in 1999 as a referee. But again, it wasn't so much in me. You know, I, I would go for a game just a matter of going because I am a ref. So I would go for a game appointed as a ref. I go, I officiate, come back, not having in, in mind to say I can go further in, uh, in this field. But again, when I looked at uh, the way things started like happening, they started like talking about me. I go for a game, I see something in the paper, positive uh, comments and stuff. So I had to sit down and say, hey, I think I'm doing something great towards this uh, 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 field. I think let me like, put much mind on it, try to be focused, and see how far I can go. So uh, I remember the first game I was given it was uh, uh, Kitwe United versus Inchanga Rangers in Kitwe as the first uh, uh, premier game. You know, mm -hmm. I was going for these uh, small uh, games like the lower division. Lower division, but uh, for, uh, premier, for league. premier League. My first game was uh, Kito United versus Inchanga Rangers. In that particular game, I had two red cards and uh, three yellow cards. I remember because it was my first game, you know. But the following day... And you day, couldn't keep your hands in your... <laughs> no. <laughs> away from the pocket. No, I couldn't. But I, the following day, uh, the comments were so positive, though they were... You know, you know, people don't like red cards. You know, red cards, penalty, they don't like that. Once that was the step of the game. They, they, they're justified. Of, of course. course. It gives an, an, a, sometimes it gives undue advantage. To sure, you. sure. It, it alters the complexion of the game. That, that, that's true, that's true. But, you know, positive comments came in and stuff. Then I said to myself, hey, I think let me just focus on this. I think time for playing football has finished. I just have to go ahead. I'm a teacher and uh, I can do other things like refereeing. So that's how I, I started like focusing on, uh, on, on refereeing. Was your father a referee? Yes, he was a referee. He inspired you to become a referee? Of course he did. He inspired uh, me to become a referee. I remember the time I got uh, uh, the award for the best uh, referee, uh, season of 2005. You know, he came back to me, I was saying, hey, I also have got <laughs> an award, you know, that was the, an award of um, improved uh, referee in uh, 1984. 
he got an award. So we were like joking. I said, hey, me, I'm the best. You, you were improved, you know, something like that, you know. <laughs> so it's a family of referees. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So he, he gave you the first start, coached you? Of course. I remember when we were training, we were training together. You know, he used to put me in front, you know, say, I'll, I'll be following you. So you find to say, when he's following you, you'd feel that, hey, somebody is just closer to me. So you try to push so that you don't even hear somebody breathing on your back, you know. So that's how we were like, training together. Yeah. Now, tell us about your breakthrough. I know your, your, your first breakthrough, people consider 2008 as your biggest breakthrough on the international scene. Is, is that correct? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, 2008, it was um, the time I was like, given a chance to go for young talent in South Africa, that was in Pretoria. You know, CAF organized that uh, uh, course. So I went uh, on with uh, my friend, uh, Lav Mojere. He was an assistant referee who went uh, the two of us. So for me, it was a breakthrough. I, I, I said, okay, if people have recognized me to say I can go for this uh, uh, tournament, uh, for this uh, course, it means that there's an element that they have seen in me that I can improve. So I, I, I worked hard in, in that course, and uh, uh, I'm proud to mention that uh, I was uh, uh, among us the best people yeah, during that uh, course. So it was my breakthrough, and uh, I started like pushing and see how I can uh, improve uh, with my reference. 2008, you, 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 you had to go for the Kosafa Under-20 Championship? Was oh, that yes. the start of bigger things? Yes, uh, that was in South Africa. Uh, it was a replacement. I wasn't appointed for that uh, tournament, I remember. And um, what they did was uh, they called other people to go for that tournament. You know, and what happens is that when referees are called for a tournament, there's uh, a physical fit uh, fitness test that is uh, uh, conducted. So if you find yourself, you know, like you failed the, the test, you're going to be sent back home. So we had uh, two people who failed uh, the, 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 the test. So they looked around to say, whom can we just pick from, from the bed? He's dreaming and we, you know, he was sleeping and we can just say, hey, come and run and can pass who around this region. So people just said, hey, there's somebody in Zambia who can, who can do that. I thank God, you know, it was me. They said, can you come for this tournament? I said, yes. Are you ready to do the physical fitness? I said, yes. So they organized the air ticket for me. I went. The following day, I had to do my physical fitness and I had to pass. In that particular tournament, I had only one game, which I said, this is the game that they have given me and I'll have to make sure to say I leave a mark. I'll do one game, that's it, but I'll leave a mark for people to remember. So why did they give you one game? Lack of confidence? They uh, didn't have so much faith in you. Of Maybe... I would say so, you know, being uh, a new uh, person uh, on the scene and stuff, maybe they had uh, a little bit of doubt. Is he able to uh, contain the pressure? Is he able to control, you know, that type of a thing? So it happened that way that uh, I was given one game. But for me, it was a plus to say, hey, this game is okay. I have done it. There was nothing that people can point to say, hey, this is a, a, a full back and stuff. So for me, it was okay. And I had to leave it that way. Mm -hmm. How did this impact on your career and your life? I mean, first international tournament. Well, uh, it, 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 it had a very big uh, impact uh, in, in the sense that uh, uh, people now, they knew who Jan was. So I had to put something into people's mind to say whatever they are going to organize, you know, in Africa, they will remember to say there's somebody whom we can rely on, whom we can pick, and uh, he can do wonders uh, during our, our tournaments. 2008 up to 2012, you didn't really do so much on the international scene. Was that by design? Was, was N not really, but uh, it was so nice again uh, in, 20, uh, uh, in 2011 when I was uh, appointed to go for all Africa game, uh, games in, uh, in Mozambique. For me, it was another thing that I said, oh, let me work hard again. You know, this is another chance that I've been given to, to, to show to, to the continent that 
I can do it. So I was given the first game. By then you were still in the Kosafa ranks. Yes. You hadn't broken onto the calf, calf scene. No. Uh, going into uh, under 20. Uh, Kosafa. Uh, Kosafa. Uh, people had to see something. All the region uh, tournaments have been watched by the executives of, uh, of CAF. CAF. So they had to watch and they had to see. You know? So you'd find to say, uh, after they watch, they pick. So the 2011 uh, tournament I'm talking about, that was in uh, Mozambique, the All Africa Games, you know, they had to make their conclusion already. They said he'll be the first person to open the, the, the tournament. I was surprised. I said, oh, okay, I'll go for it. But I went into my room. I was like, my God, this is the opportunity that I've been given. Help me to show the tournament, the, the, the continent that I can do it. So I went for that game, flat-footed. I said, if this is the only game I'm going to do, let it be. But this should leave a mark. Fortunate enough, I only did two games in that uh, uh, tournament. tournament. Yes. The opening and the closing. The final. The finals, yes. So it was so, so it was a plus for me. I was like, wow. Because I haven't seen such a thing happen, you know, where somebody would like open and close. Close, that's the ultimate. That's a big mark. And oh, yes. Recognition oh, yes. of your effort. That, that is true. That is true. And because of the performance that was uh, portrayed uh, during that uh, All Africa game, uh, I was also given a chance now to go for uh, AFCON, first time. Uh, 2012, 12, that was 2012. 2012, yes. How did you perform? In the, in that uh, well, you know, being first time, you know, <laughs> in a tournament and I was a little bit young, you know, okay, a little bit scared, you know, I was quite scared and uh, it wasn't that bad. But again, I remember very well, <laughs> it was like... Um, a critical decision that I made, you know, the Niger uh, player went with the hand, but he didn't touch the ball. The goalkeeper for Tunisia missed the, the, the ball. The other guy finished the, uh, the, with, with a nice shot at goal. So people started like complaining to say, hey, you touched the ball. I said, no, sorry. I had to stick to my guns. I said, it's a goal. And it was <laughs> something, you know, in my career because the the referees uh, the chairman for the referees committee was coming from Tunisia you know so people were like so scared they say hey how can you make such a decision against, against Tunisia but I was like I don't look on to whoever comes from whatever country or whichever country I'm officiating my job is to do the work according to what I've seen and according to the thing that is supposed to be done at that particular time. So I wasn't looking on to anybody. I went in and do my work finished. So I said, oh, let's wait for deep briefing. You know, as referees, when you're having uh, tournaments, there's what we call deep briefing, where after maybe four, uh, four games, you are made to sit in a room like this. Then we are able to analyze the games and try to improve for the next games in the tournament. So they had to like wait even for the chairman to come. <laughs> so it was delayed because the chairman was away. So the debriefing was delayed. It was supposed to start, uh, I think, 15 hours. It started uh, 45 minutes late because of that. We wanted to wait for the chairman. And the first script was the same. <laughs> yeah, the game you had officiated. The the game, your controversial game. That's the thing. So they had to like bring this angle, bring the other angle, bring the other angle. And uh, they found that there was no handball, whatever. But again, they had to come down trying to convince to say, hey, but the action of a player where he had to like attempt to, to, touch. to touch the ball, maybe that would have been an offense. But we, we went down to the, to the laws of the game. What does it say? It is just said handball or no handball. There's nothing like attempt to handle the ball. The intent is not punished. It's, it's the, not there the in the, the do it. it's the not action. there in the laws of the game. But these other laws where you say attempt to strike an opponent, it is an offense. But where handball is concerned, there's no, there's no part where they say attempt. 
So on that part, I was saved by the laws of the game because I had to follow the laws and I was kept into Did it affect your stay at the African? No, it didn't affect uh, my stay uh, on the, 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 the tournament. Uh, I would say, you know, it's just because of maybe experience. They had to, like, leave the experienced guys to finish the tournament. I remember the, the, the finals for, for Zambia I watched at home. You had already come back. Now, yes. you, you have now officiated four finals, two CAF Champions League, one Africa Cup of Nations, one FIFA Club World Cup, and now the World Cup. But what do they look at when they're picking? They, they, they look at uh, different uh, 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 character in a person as a referee. First of all, they also look onto the personality of uh, that particular referee. Secondly, they also look at the, uh, the control of the game. How do you interpret the laws of the game? You know, other people, they may be good in knowing the laws of the game, okay? From law 1 up to uh, law 17, okay? But again, what is important is to implement what you have read. So they also look onto that. So when somebody gets into the field of play, they look onto all those things. How do he manage uh, situations like this? How do, uh, does he interpret the, the laws? How does he control the match? All those things. So once they consider all those things and you are ticking in all those, then you are going to be considered in the uh, big... Uh, big again. Before you are picked, do you do a test, an exam? Do you sit for, for, for a test? Of course we do. You know, we, 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 we see it revise on the laws of the game of course physical fitness uh, test is also done you know in, uh, for for somebody to continue like uh, uh, the following season we have to do the physical fitness so that you, you are ready for whatever game we are going to be assigned to let's look at controversies you've, you've picked out the niger game as one of uh, the, the games where you really experienced serious uh, controversy we also have the uh, fifa club world cup there was also an issue of where you almost gave a red card and withdrew? Well, uh, that was the first time uh, FIFA was introducing uh, the VAR, which is the Video Assistant Referee, you know. And I'm proud to mention to the nation that I was the first one to do the, to use it. the, 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 the Video Assistant Referee at, at a Club World Cup. I did the opening uh, game and I did the finals. And um, looking on to what people were saying to say, hey, John was supposed to issue a red card and stuff. What they couldn't understand was uh, the issue of VR, okay? Because we need to communicate. And once you communicate, you have to now arrive at the final decision. So there was a lot of communication that was going on. Because it was done for the first time, the communication wasn't even okay. So we're trying to get what, what is he saying, what is this guy saying, all those things. No wonder even this time, FIFA is continuing, you know, trying to teach referees about uh, uh, the video assistant referee. And I'm proud to mention that they have now included it even in the laws of the game. When somebody has got the, the new laws of the game, which is the 2018-2019 uh, edition, you would find to say they have now included that. So on that part, it's that, that people didn't understand that uh, system that FIFA brought. So we need to get down to understand all the protocols that uh, 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 are considered in the, in the issue of uh, the video assistant referee. Mm -hmm. when, when there's a controversy in a game, how does that impact on your performance? I mean, you're probably 10 minutes into a game, and there's this decision, you're not really sure whether you've made the correct one. Uh, for instance, I'll take you back to your Niger game, and, and on your mind you're thinking, well, I've made a decision against the chairperson, mm. and, and it's probably a few minutes into the game. How does that affect your performance? Well, uh, what I can say is that we are human beings as referees, and we tend to make mistakes, okay? And I will tell you to say, not even uh, Corina would mention to say, in his career of refereeing, he didn't make even a single mistake. He made a mistake as well, in one way or another. 
because we are human beings. But again, once we make a mistake as referees, okay, we should now remember to say this mistake has passed and I just have to, to focus. Once it remains on your back of your mind, you are going to make more mistakes. Okay? So for me, that's how I, I take. I would even realize to say, Ish, I think I made a, a mistake here. But again, it shouldn't remain in, in the back of my mind. I have to continue with my work. I need to finish the, uh, the game in a proper way. So once we do that, you find to say, it will be just that mistake and that's it. But once you have it in your mind to say, hey, I made a mistake, I think it was supposed to be a penalty. Or that wasn't supposed to be a penalty, something like that. Once you start thinking like that, you'll find to say more mistakes will be committed in that particular game. Do, is there a time when you feel tempted to, to hit back at players? You just oh, have this course. routine that is probably going to of course. get at you, That's dispute true. all your decisions. That is true. And really? Mm -hmm. And do you feel like now I must show them? Correct. Sometimes you would feel like that. You know, some people would come to you. You know, a young player maybe coming to you, then you realize, hey, look at this, this boy. You know, what type of behavior is this? You know, you feel to the say, say I, I can hit back. But again, the personality will bring you back to say, hey, you are a ref. You must show discipline. Discipline should start with you. So you would like control yourself and remain cool, you know, and make sure to say you control everybody. You know, many of the times you find say, people may think to say, as referees, you can say anything, you know, because they are referees. They are human beings. They've got temper. You know, how to handle issues when they, you know, you, you receive. Others have got short temper, you know. So we feel like that sometimes. But again, what brings us back is the career that we are having, you know, the picture that we will now give to the, the people out there because we know to say discipline should begin with us. Tell me, what, what are the qualities of a good rave? First of, of all, discipline should be one of them. Yeah. Of course, discipline should be one of them. But the other thing uh, is uh, physical fitness. One of the, the cardinal quality of, uh, 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 I would say, top referee. Not a good referee, but top, top referee. referee. A lot of people may be good referees. But FIFA also needs top referee to handle their bigger, uh, big tournaments. So physical fitness is cardinal. Why are we saying physical fitness is cardinal? We are expected to read the game, anticipate, and be at the right position to make a correct decision. But how are we going to do it? We've got lives of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. The people of, uh, we can talk about Hazard. We talk about uh, uh, the Rukaku people, you know. You would find to say these, these people can run. So if you are not physically fit, by the time something is happening in the, the penalty area, you'll be in the center circle. And how do you make a decision? Quite all right, you may be able to judge, to say, I think an offense has been committed. But also, people look at your position. Where were you the time you made the decision? So, as a uh, top referee, you must be closer to the incident to make a correct decision. So that is another point where we, we, we have to, to look at. Se uh, the other point is the interpretation. Okay, the interpretation of the laws of the game. I'll talk about uh, the, 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 the incident that happened in the, the last finals, World Cup. You know, there was handball incident, if you remember very well. Okay, other, you know, I was receiving a lot of uh, uh, questions. Hey, Jan, is that handball? Is that, you know, just interpret that. Other people become, uh, it becomes difficult. For, for other people. So, interpretation of the laws is also another thing. Okay? So, those are the things that they look at. So, once you do that, you are following the laws of the game, interpretation is good, then you'll be considered as... Uh, By description, some of the players could be considered as big actors. Do they influence you? How, how much do they influence your decision? You know, sometimes... I would, they're, say, they're, I would say not only big players. Okay? We talk about all the players. They are actors. No wonder when we sit in a class as referees, they tell us to say, you must be an actor as well. So as a referee, to perform well, you must be an actor as well. You know, other people, you know, you know a player, just a small thing, 
you will start now roaring on the ground as if something big has happened. So if you didn't see that, you may react, you know, uh, you may make a decision. Based on the reaction. Based on the, the reaction. Uh, the play on the ground. Correct. Okay. But if you were close, you had to see everything, you know to say this is how these players act and stuff, you are going to make a correct decision and things will be okay. So as a ref, you should also be an actor. Do you feel depressed sometimes? You make a decision based on, on the player lying on the ground, looking injured, but immediately they stand up and take the penalty themselves. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when in the actual fact, they should have been really injured. Okay, personally, uh, I don't, I don't uh, make my decision based on what I've seen player doing, roaring and stuff. Okay, but yes, I have seen other referees do that, which is the wrong thing. Which is the wrong thing. So, as referees, we shouldn't act on whatever, you know, based on a player, you know, roaring or whatever he has done and stuff. The other thing you'd find to say, spectators, they will shout and whatever, because of that intimidation, you want now to make a decision so that now you appear to be a good referee, which is the wrong thing. Okay. So you really have to be brave all the time. You, you just have to have, have to the stand courage. against the crowd. You have to have the courage and do it. You know, you shouldn't care about maybe a, a game is abandoned and stuff. Sit down and say, why have I abandoned the game? Is this the correct decision? Yes. Finish. Don't worry about say, oh, are we going to move out nicely? You know, uh, out of this place. We shouldn't put uh, things in in. Uh, in our mind like that. Your safety doesn't come first. Is I'll give you an example. There's a game that I abandoned. You know, Zambians, they know about it. It was the, in Kitwe at uh, Arthur Davis uh, Stadium. It was Power versus Mufrida Wanderers, I, th I think, I remember. You know, my assistant was uh, uh, stoned just some few seconds uh, before halftime. You know, after it was done, then I blew my whistle for half time. So, you know, you've seen assistant coming to the referee after uh, the, the whistle. They come to the referee. So he came to me and he was like showing me where he was hit. And it was bad. I was like, we don't have security here. So we went into the dressing room. I told both teams to say, see what has happened, you know. And the, my assistant wasn't even able to continue with the game. Okay. So because of that, I said, we are not going to continue with the game because there is no security. Okay? Spectators didn't know about the decision because people went for half time. So they were expecting people to come to back. come back on the pitch. For the second half. Okay? So it was commotion in the dressing room. What, what, people came into uh, our dressing room as referees. You know, the boss chairman and said, oh, Johnny, but uh, you know what? I said, look at my, my assistant. And it was solemn, you know. So I said, no, I cannot do this. We cannot wait for somebody to be killed. Then we abandon the game. No. Or I wait until I am hit myself. Then I abandon the game as a referee. No. My assistant is part of the team. So if something has been done to my assistant, and I've seen to say there's no security, then I'm here to protect everyone, the players, the referees, the, the, the coaches. So I had to... You cancelled off. the game. I can't, Call it off. I had to cancel the game. So after the spectators now learned to say the game won't uh, take place and the decision was made by the referee, now they wanted now the neck of, uh, <laughs> the ref. Of, of the ref, you know. It was commotion. They started now throwing stones and stuff. So uh, I, I went with a friend, so he's the one who had to, to drive my car, and uh, I went into the police car, you know, they had to protect me, it was bad, until I was dropped at the, the, the police station, and that's where I met my friend. So it happens, it is part of us as referees, so when part something, of the game. something uh, like that happens, well, we just say it is part of us, and we have to like, uh, continue. 2018, you made history by becoming the first Zambian to officiate at the World Cup. I want you to take us to Russia. I know your memories are, are still fresh. How was it? Well, Russia experience was fantastic, I can tell you. It was fantastic. And um, I wouldn't say, well, being the first Zambian to go to the World Cup and stuff, that is not uh, quite important for me. 
but just the experience of being uh, at the World Cup, it was so nice, you know, meeting different cultures, you know, me meeting different people, you know, uh, having experience of different football. You know, when you look onto our football here in Zambia, as well as our friend, totally different, you know. As Zambians, I would say we like, you know, okay, five touches or so, then you even hear spectators cheering to say, hey, our team is playing nice football. But with our friends, I would say they mean business. Maybe if I can put it that way, where they, they will just play, the next thing must be in the box, penalt box. They play again, it must be in the penalt, you know. So if everything, it, 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 they've got a target. They've got a target. If they've got a, a, a first player, he must go into the box so that they can get something. If at all they know to say somebody knows how to, 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 to take uh, set pieces, they will make sure to say, they make sure that there are fouls around the penalty area so that they can take those uh, set pieces. So it's all different, so nice experience that I was like getting, you know. For, for me, I, I really enjoyed and uh, I would to, uh, even encourage uh, my, my, my fellow referees here in Zambia to say, well, I was just given a chance. It's not that I'm, I'm the best or whatever. It was just a chance that I was given and I went to the World Cup. They can also do it. They can also do it. Did you experience. anticipate in your life that one, one day you would have shared at the World Cup? Of course, I did. <laughs> you know, target. People didn't realize what I was thinking. Of course, you know, as human beings, we have our own uh, thinking and stuff. We sit back and just do our thinking and see how we can work, we can work on it. Uh, I had a smoker, you know, Toyota Opa. And at the back, I had to write one day then i had to put three dots boom boom like that just that so people were like i said ah what is this ah one day you know i just said no finish that sentence in your own way because i'm finishing that sentence in my own way so they didn't know what i was saying they were just saying one day one day but one day it happened and i was in russia and now you're going to remove that from your car ah <laughs> already removed. Well, they, uh, <laughs> now let's let, let's look at at at, at, at you you at the World Cup. I, I, I've seen your expression. It, it, it it's it's uh, electric when you're there. And a lot of pressure. These guys wanted to get into the box, and you've got world class players there too. Do do you feel intimidated? I, mean, uh, I wouldn't say. These no. are players you'd want to meet yourself and and take selfies with. This, this is the uh, the personality that uh, uh, somebody should have strong personality where you say, fine, I'm meeting so-called big players. They are so-called big players. They're just human beings like anybody else, okay? But for me, when I'm officiating uh, a, a team where they are so-called big players, that's the time I gain confidence to say, this is what I wanted. Now I can stand there because the authority is in my hands. I can do it and I will do it because I can do it. So during the World Cup, Yes, we met people, uh, so-called big players and stuff, but it was so nice that uh, I went into uh, the field of play and do my work. But what people don't realize is that though they are called big players, what I learned from those guys was discipline. They are so disciplined in such a way that when you are out there, you may think to say, he, of shutting a game for these people, I think it would be a hell of a thing where I would like, I don't know what I'm going to do just to control these people. It's so nice because they are disciplined. Once they are, there's a foul and whatever, they'll just move and do their own things because they know to say once they get into the, the field of play, for them it's business and that's it. And the ref is in yes. charge. Now, this is what how do you I rate always, your performance? Maybe before you yeah. conclude, this is what I always encourage uh, 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 players right here in Zambia to say, you people, those people you, you feel, you, you think they are big players, what they carry in their head is discipline. I think no wonder it, they have developed in those lines. You know, I think some two or three days ago, uh, Lusaka Dynamos was going to the Copper Belt, I think playing power. They met me in Capitan Ponch 
you know, I was at the feeding station, then their bus landed. Then they came, ah, FIFA, whatever, whatever. You know, they came out, we were greeting each other and stuff. Then I, I was even telling them, say, you know where the problem is? The problem is that we have distanced ourselves. The players and referees must be enemies, which is the wrong thing. There are a lot of things that we can come together and learn. We share between the players and referees. Referees, they know the content, you know, but players may, may not know, you know, some of the laws, uh, laws of the game. But we need a referee to teach them, you know. But when you, uh, people see a referee with players, maybe talking to them, they will say, The game has been sold. It's and part of the, <laughs> it's part of that team and stuff, which is the wrong thing, you know. What I found that is with those uh, big teams, they have even a referee, for instance, a former referee who is not involved in these other whatever, who is giving more information, you know, to players so that they know what is supposed to be done. What is expected of them? Yeah. Now, you are known for flashing so many yellow cards. 178 on the international scene. Is that your style? <laughs> no, it's too not, many. It's, it's not my style. And we cannot say uh, too many. I'll give you an example. Uh, my first game at the World Cup, you know, I had so many yellow cards. Eight. Why? Because of the nature of the game. And the cards, the yellow card or the red card, we don't just look onto ourselves to say, okay, I think now I can issue the yellow card or I can now issue the red yeah. card. No, it's about what you have seen. So it is about the interpretation of the law. So if there is denying goal scoring opportunity, so I wouldn't say, okay, I won't give uh, uh, issue the red card because, okay, I will manage. No. The laws expect you as a referee to do that. So if you see somebody breaking the promising attack, I've got no option. The yellow card will come in. If somebody acts in a reckless manner, I've got no option. Yellow card will come out like that. So that is what it's supposed to be done. So if we've got a referee out there who says to say, okay, let me keep the, the shit clean, then he's making a mistake. I remember even the time we had a meeting, you know, as referees at the World Cup, Colina was also telling us to say, don't keep cards in your pocket and have a clean sheet and say, no, I had a clean sheet. I had no yellow card and you think you've done better. No. If you are expected to issue a, red, a yellow card, do it. Because we need to control the game in the a correct manner. Maintain discipline. Yes. How would you rate your performance with, with the VAR, VAR at, 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 at the World Cup? Uh, I'm proud to mention that I didn't have any review. Okay. And um, for, uh, uh, if I can remember what uh, uh, Busaka was saying, was telling us, Busaka is uh, the... The, the head of uh, the referees, he was saying, if you are able to anticipate into the, in, in the game, you are able to read the game, you are able to take good movements, and you are able to position yourself correctly, you don't need VAR. Do you know the reason why VR has come in? They are, uh, it has come in just to, like a tool to help the referee. Same as the assistant referees or the fourth official. What the referee hasn't seen, then the VR will come in. So if you position yourself in a correct position and you take a correct angle, you will make a correct uh, decision. So for me, not having uh, VR intervention, I would rate myself to say, I think I had to position myself correctly and I had to make a correct decision. Correct decisions. Now, yes. let's look at the standard of refereeing in Zambia. Soccer fans strongly feel the standards are too low. I wouldn't say no. And I wouldn't say yes. They may be right, they may be wrong. But on part of referees, we haven't stopped training. We, we are continuing to train. Other people mention to say, no, it's only Jan. No, it's not only me. 
I train with these people. It's the same uh, uh, laws of the game. But I'm telling people to say it is only the chance that I was given. So it's not only, not only Jane who knows. No. We know what we are doing as referees. So the standards they are talking about may be the difference of understanding the laws of the game. Okay? You would find to say the spectators out there, they don't know about the laws of the game. And when we implement the laws of the game in the field of play, we may seem not to know because they want us to do what they feel will favor their team. So you would Does find the fact to that uh, Zambia doesn't have so many uh, referees under, the FIFA, under FIFA speak to the fact that our standards are not good? We only have four. No. Referees and, and, and six assistants for men? No, we wouldn't say like, like that. It, it is just the slot that we have been given. For instance, when you look onto the slot of uh, referees at the World Cup, UEFA has got a big slot uh, compared to Africa. So does it mean that Africa, we are not doing it? We are doing it. But it's just the, the, the slot that FIFA has given us. So when you look onto the four referees that we have here, those, those are the only sorts that we have as, uh, as Zambians. It's just uh, the, the number that we have been given. If at all FIFA can give us more uh, uh, slots as Zambians, we can even see more people doing it. They are there. We can see if at all uh, they have been given uh, even uh, the Super League here. They are doing better. We've got young people who are coming up. We talk about the lives of, uh, uh, the lives of uh, uh, Chimense. Those, those young referees, they are doing it in, here in Zambia. Talking and you are providing inspiration, of, of course. course. Now, now, let's look at your chances of officiating at USA and um, uh, Qatar. Do you have the chance? Uh, the standard chance? 2022? I'm, I'm, I'm still young. I would call myself young, though I'm old. <laughs> I'm still young in the, in the, in the referees' uh, 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 family. And... Uh, I was waiting for the final whistle at the World Cup. The final whistle had to be blown, and that was the beginning of the four years. And the focus has already started. So the chances of me going there, they are a lot. It's only now that I should now start working. If at all I put myself out there to say, hey, we've gone for uh, this uh, previous uh, World Cup, then it will be a chance for us to go uh, even for the next one. Then I'm lying unto myself because I need to work. Every time there's a final whistle at the World Cup, FIFA now begins their project. So there will be a project that FIFA now will come up with where now they will start now training Assessing, people. monitoring. Yes, training people, getting them ready for the next World Cup. When do you plan to retire? Uh, after. Have the, you ever thought about it? Yes. I would say after the next World Cup, I will retire. Now, the, just before the World Cup, there was a, 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 use, a huge expose about referees selling games. Uh, we heard about How it. big is that problem? Uh, I heard about it, but uh, I wouldn't pass any comments. Because I, don't, I, I haven't seen any truth about it. There are some referees you know, who have been banned for receiving bribes. Yes. You know, you know s some of the things you'd find to say you are caught in a web. Okay? You know, issue of social media. Anything can be done. You know? People have become so crafty in such a way that they can connect anything and make something out of nothing. So for me... I wouldn't get it as a gospel truth, but it's just an uh, eye opener, you know, to all reference to say we have to be careful with our uh, the, the the social media. How vulnerable you, are you in terms of when you're officiating some match? Do you do you get people to approach you? You know, attempt what? you know people what? to to sway your decisions before somebody can come to you. They have to look onto you, and they they know the character of that person they need to approach. Do you know that? They know the character of that particular person. So for me, I've, I've just given a picture to people to say, my character, my personality, no one can get closer to me because I'm there to do my work and that's it. 
and FIFA has all, always uh, 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 telling us concerning the, the integrity. Once that thing is done, for me, it's just a matter of a penalty, free kick, red card, finish. So if somebody can even, I, I'm so proud to mention, that if somebody can even come to me right now to say, my friend, this is what we are thinking and stuff, within a few minutes, FIFA should know about it. And that will be the first person who must be uh, banned by FIFA. You think referees are vulnerable? I wouldn't say they are vulnerable. Because a referee, what we should know is that a referee should have a strong personality. Once you have a strong personality, you are not going to be vulnerable. But once people know your weakness, then they'll be able to capitalize on that type of uh, weakness that you have. If there are so many people who would want to follow your footsteps, what would you, what would you say to them? Well, uh, I would encourage them to say, once you, want, uh, you, 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 you need something in life, you need to, 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 to focus and start working towards that. And as a referee, you must be courageous. Because it's not about just making critical decision in the uh, field of play, but even the, 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 the integrity part of it. Because people will be now coming unto you in a different way. Trying to talk to you, probably. You know, trying to influence the, 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 the results of the game. All those things. But what you, they should now bear in mind is that once you influence the, the, the results of uh, the game, you are not going to be considered on a, a higher tournament. That is straightforward. No two ways about it. So they should remain focused, work towards their, their goals, and they'll be able to, to achieve uh, their, their goal. Besides the World Cup 2022, what are your future plans? Ah, well, concerning referee, um, me, I've got a, another vision. I'm not just looking at uh, uh, ending here as, uh, as a referee, but to train the young ones who are coming. You know, I had a target, and I think I have achieved my target. But I'm not going to end here because I need to, to, to develop more and train others. Right now, quite right, I am active referee. But back home, I'm uh, a training officer in my district, so I'm training uh, other referees. And you are moving to Lusaka? Uh, God willing, I may move uh, uh, here in Lusaka. I'll continue. But again, I would have to say thank you to uh, our first president who has uh, gotten down to us referees and opened the doors for training. Because that's exactly what we need as referees. It's not only Jan, but we need other people. But the, 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 the president has opened the doors for us referees to do the trainings and help other people to come in and uh, do the, the, the referee part. Johnny, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Well, you've been watching Sunday Interview, and our guest this week was Zambia's FIFA referee, Johnny Skazu. I'll be back next week sometime. Pleasant viewing.